it's Don once again. I'm following up on my video from the other day where I brought up the idea of connectivity across the Warm Springs Bridge and I showed this section of the video. I received a lot of feedback on that idea and some of it was positive, some of it was negative, so I thought I'd expand a little bit more on my thinking. This past weekend I went out and I measured the multimodal paths, the bridge across Lake Sumter Landing, and the bridge here at Warm Springs to get some accurate measurements and see how things really did fit together. Besides having the ability to just do this, there's also another very compelling reason why it needs to get done. I'll get to that in just a minute. One thing I didn't bring up in the last video was the routing of the multimodal paths. So I'm going to show you that in this next frame. This is the route according to the plans that the multimodal path is going to take at this particular area. Notice how it comes right up next to the end of the bridge. This was a change after the original plans were submitted. Just furthers my theory that this is the way the connectivity is going to be initially established. Now let's get to why I think this needs to happen. I'm using a website that I use for laying out flights for my drone. If you look at the top, there's a blue box. It shows you the distance of the flight. In this case, it's the distance of the path I'm plotting out. The bridge comes up here, even with County Road 502. It goes across and then goes back. And you'll see this is about a 3.8 mile trip, about 17 minutes. That's an awful long detour just to get across the bridge. Let's try a similar route in another part of the villages where everybody's familiar with it. Let's go from Laurel Manor across 466 to Saddlebrook via the Metro Diner and back. As you can see, it's 3.8 miles and 17 minutes. I don't know many people that would enjoy this kind of detour just to get across the street. Of course, there's another route that's coming too, and that's across the Baxley Bridge south of the service plaza. So let's take a look at that. We'll start again at Magnolia Plaza. We'll work our way south along the known roads. We'll take a straight line over to the Baxley Bridge, and then we'll pretty much go back up north to the other side of the turnpike. That works out to be about 4.8 miles, or 22 minutes by golf cart. And that's assuming a direct route. Now let's find a similar detour farther north. In this case, we're going to try and get across 466 at Morse Boulevard. But we're going to do that going all the way down to Laurel Manor and back. Again, I don't think this is a detour that many people are going to want to take just to get across the turnpike by golf cart. I know, there's no golf cart path on the north side of 466, but I think you get my point about the distance we're looking at here. Quite a detour. Neither of these known routes makes a whole lot of sense, which is why my idea of going across the Warm Springs Bridge makes the most sense at this point. Again, this is all an educated guess, and there's nothing official about this. We all know this bridge. It's the one across Lake Sumter at Lake Sumter Landing, and we know how narrow it is. It's only 10 feet wide and barely enough room for two golf carts to pass. I don't think I know a single person who likes to cross this bridge. Now let's take a look at a regular multimodal path. This is by Brownwood. It's about 16 feet wide. I think most will agree that under normal situations, this is wide enough for two golf carts to comfortably and safely pass each other. Let's look at the northern span of the Warm Springs Bridge. I measured this also. On the right, it's about 10 feet. On the left, about 6 feet. A grand total of 16 feet. There would easily be enough room for two carts to pass. Of course, the high-speed traffic on the bridge would be difficult to deal with, but there's already an engineered solution for that. It's called K-Rail. We've all seen it on the highways. It's commonly used to divide traffic. But how big is it? The normal is 32 inches wide and about 42 inches tall. There's a smaller version that's 24 inches wide and 32 inches tall. And then there's an abbreviated version, which is only 16 inches wide, but it's also 32 inches tall. Any one of these would probably make an acceptable barrier. How do these compare to a golf cart? Let's take a look. This is 32 inches and it comes up about to the dash of a golf cart. Either of the shorter barriers should probably work.
If we measure for 42 inches, we see that that comes to just below the standard golf cart mirrors. Once again, this would work very well for us also. Car headlights would probably be a problem, but there's a solution for that. They make a barrier that they can attach to the top of the K-rail. Let's take a look at how this all lays out on the road. Here's the bridge with its 6 foot median, 10 foot median, and two 12 foot lanes. If we shifted the lanes left about five and a half feet and then put the K-rail down, we still have room for two golf cart lanes. How wide the two lanes would be would be dependent upon the K-rail used, anywhere from 14 foot 3 inches to 12 foot 10 inches. Any of these would be an improvement over what's over Lake Sumter Landing and would provide for a safe crossing. So that's my connectivity theory. Again, none of this is official and I'm still looking for that smoking gun that proves me right. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think.